What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to IT Security Labs. And today we're completing this room from TriHackMe. It's called Splunk Exploring SPL. And this room here has a few objectives. We are going to learn what are search processing language and how to apply filters to narrow down the results. We use some transformation and changing the order of the results. So that's our Splunk. If you're curious why we need to learn, well, a lot of employers are looking for people who know how to use Splunk or similar tools. So knowing Splunk is definitely going to help you, especially if you're someone who is new to cybersecurity or is trying to upskill. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, start the room, join the room. I already did that. And then connect to the lab. Click on start the machine here. And once the machine is started, you can see you're done. Then what is the name of the host in the data summary tab? So we'll be using Windows logs. So I opened the other machine. If you go to search and reporting, here's the data, data summary tab and the host is cyber-host. So that's where this cyber-host came from. Then search and reporting overview. So this will talk about the search and reporting feature in Splunk and it will highlight that, you know, there's this search and reporting app where we can put custom queries pretty much. We can change the date up here. We can see the history of all the commands that we ran. We also have a data summary, which is where we found that answer that they were looking for. Then we also have the sidebar, which is the left side of Splunk. So if we come in here and we look in our search history, on the left side here, we have some interesting fields. But for now, let's make sure that it's looking at all time. Left side here, this is very helpful, especially if you need to create custom queries very quickly. So we'll use this left side here in a second. So that's what they're talking about here. And next to say destination IP is 18 or a number that shows you how many of those records are there, which is interesting. And we can expand our records on this side here. We have selected fields, which are the obvious fields that show up there. Then we have interesting fields that you should look into to see what kind of data is there. Then we have some alpha numeric symbols here. So in the search history, what is the seventh search query excluding the ones from today? So if you go here, I just like to click on the Splunk logo, then search and reporting. Here's search history. They're looking for the seventh one. Let's make sure that we see maybe let's put here 50. And we don't want anything from today. So seventh one from when it was not today or the or one below it. So let's see. Even by image, so it's this one. So this is seven from when it was not. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's this answer here. In the left field panel, which source IP has recorded max events? In the left field, we need to look for source IP. This one, edit to search on all time. So we need to look for source IP. Yes, source IP. I'll check it to add it to the list. So it's easier to see. Now if we can come down here. Yes, source IP. Which one is the most events? This one. Copy that. And that's this one here. How many events are retained when we apply a time to display 4, 15, 22, and that time? So 4, 15, 22. We need to change our time picker. Date and time range between. So we need to go to April 15th. And then we need the specific time that they're talking about. 8.05 to 8.06 a.m. So 08.05 to 08 the same date, 808. 06. So if we apply, that's that custom time, and we see 134 events. So that's where this 134 came from. As you can see, I'm not done with these tasks, so we have more exploring to do together here. I just decided to make a video after I started doing this. I was like, hey, maybe a good idea for a video. So here's some Splunk processing overview where they teach us how. You can run some Splunk queries. The most important thing here is this comparison operators here. 
So we have equal, not equal to greater than less than, and also greater than or equals to. So we can search using any of these operators using the Splunk processing language that we will be learning here. Super simple though. For me, the end not are the interesting ones and also not equals to. So let's go and see. We can use wildcards, as you can see here. How many events returned when searching for event ID one and user James star star? So first we need to say event ID. Okay, event ID is goes to one. We see 25 ID. Then we want a user to be James. Here is James. But they said is James with a star star. So this might miss James entirely. Star James. And we see four events. And that's where this four came from. How many events observed with this destination? It's a destination IP of that and destination port of 135. So typing destination IP of that. We see 37 events. Then uh, source port. Uh, then port. Destination port of 135. Okay, something happened here. All right, there we go. It was case sensitive. So we have four events. That's where the second four came from. What is the source IP with the highest returned after this query? Okay. And they want source IP with the highest count. So click on source IP. And the highest count is 172.90.12.11, which is this one. In the index windows log, search for all events that contain the term cyber. So search for the term cyber. We can just do this. And we see that we have none, we have zero. That's where this zero came from. Now search for cyber star. They just want to show us that you can search using wildcards. And we see 12,256, which is this one. Right now we're in task, task number five. On this section here, they teach us a few of the operators. So let's cover a few of them. Well, for starters, we can search for fields. So we can say index is goes to that. Then we can put whatever fields that you want, which is what we have been doing so far. But interesting one is we can use the example search. We can use the word search for any keyword. So like what we did last time, we can say search PowerShell and it will show us PowerShell stuff. If we want to remove duplicates, we can say ddupe and then by whatever we want to remove. So ddupe is another command that we can add. And just like that, we can pipe to ddupe, which is kind of cool. We can also use the table command to see things in the table, like here. And we can use the rename command to get a new field. So here's a query. We can run a query, then pipe it to rename as something and that field will show up to the left here. Great. So what is the event third event ID returned by this query here? First, we need to understand what this query is doing. Paste out our results. So this is looking through our same index. It's going to give us the results in table format, and it's going to table time, event ID, host name, and source name, which is exactly what we have here. And it's reversing the results pretty much. So the one, the third, which is 4103 right here, Use the dedupe command against hostname field before the reverse. So we need to do dedupe against hostname. So we can come here, say pipe dedupe on hostname and give me everything in reverse. And there we go. And what is the question? What is the first username? And the first username is Serena Adams. And just like that. So table dedupe reverse all right so that's what i had done before i started this recording now here everything is blind let's find out structuring the search results okay so we can use head tail and sort which we already know from linux so we can head tail and sort and that's the syntax for that for sorting but of course the order of these matters so if we sort and then head if we head then sort you might get something different so 
Head will return the top 10 results. Head 20 will give you more results. And that's the syntax for head. And here's something that we are looking for. And we're looking just for top five. Just teaching us head, tail. Here's tail syntax. Tail then the number of lines that you want from the bottom up. And example of that. Then we have the sort command, which allows us to order the fields in ascending or descending order. So sort, then the field number. So sort host name, this will sort the result in ascending order. As you can see, all right. The reverse command simply reverses the order of the events. Okay. So if, it, if I did a tail, then I can reverse. All right. Using the reverse command in the search query, what is the host name that comes on the top? So we need to pipe this to reverse, which we already have reverse here. So we just need to paste our command here. And after this, we should be able to get our answer. What is the host name that comes on top? So this one. What is the last event ID returned when the query in one is updated with tail command? Uh, so are we re replacing reverse? So instead of reverse, we say tail. Is that so? What is the last event ID returned? So event ID 4103. All right. So the above against source name. What is the top source name returned? Is that the correct query? What is the top source name returned? Uh, that's going to be PowerShell. Is that? Oh, it doesn't like that. What did I do wrong? So uh, do I need to move tail? Okay, I see. I just needed to remove tail because now the answer is correct. Okay, transforming things with SPL, Splunk processing language. So let's see, uh, what are they talking about there? Transformational commands are the commands that change the result in data structure. This command simply transforms specific value of things. So like top, uh, limit. Okay, so this command returns frequent values for the top 10 events. So that's the top command. Top limit is goes to three event ID. So it gives us the top three event IDs. Top something equals to. So this is the syntax for the top command. Rare. This command does not, does the opposite of top, which shows you the least common things. So rare limit image, whatever that is. Okay. Highlight. The highlight command shows the results in a in raw events mode with fields highlighted. Oh, cool. I never used that one before. Highlight, field one, field two. Highlight, username, username. Okay, let me, okay. States. These are the states commands here that we can use. Uh, we have a, SPO supports various states commands. So average, this command is to calculate average, mean, count, you know, all the statistics commands. We also have the chart command, which is used to transform data into different visualization. So chart count by user and you can choose. Wow, that is kind of cool. Windows. So we can say chart. Time chart. We we'll also convert it to a time chart. List the top eight images, image processes using the top command. What is the total count of the sixth image? So here's the syntax. All right, total count of the sixth image, 196. All right, so this is the sixth image, of course, I counted there. Using the rare command, identify the user with the least number of activities captured. So we go back to our rare command. So we're using the rare command against the users. Is it user or users? I can find out what this is here. But James is the user that has the list. Create create a pie chart using the chart command. What is the count of the corn exit process? Okay, so we need the count of the corn corn host at exe process. Same query. Corn host here now is seventy, so that's the answer. 
So submit. The results are correct. Recap and conclusion. Here we have done a few things. So please complete this if you haven't. Otherwise, this is a really good room. And there's more Splunk here. We need to get better and practice this. So I'll be doing more practice and getting ready for, you know, whatever comes. Otherwise, thank you for being here. And I hope to see you next time.